Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with the review for Real Housewives app of Atlanta. Blah, 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 blah. I had coffee this morning. Feel so anxious, you guys. I mean, I'm sure the coffee made it worse. But anyway, let's let's take it again. What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with the review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 10, the reunion part one. So here we are again. After 10 seasons and, I guess, 10 years of Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, back at the Biltmore, and the girls got all gussied up for another round of fool of fucking niggatry. <laughs> Actually, the first part was, you know, as first parts usually go, not too, too much, but promising of a more drama-filled part two. We are all looking forward to the tearing apart of Kim uh, Zolciak Bierman. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the arrangements of the uh, couch, because I was really, I was really surprised at the way they had it set up. Okay, so we have Kenya on the very far left who looked beautiful by the way in her yellow i thought her dress was really pretty i thought her makeup was done nicely her hair looked nice then we had cynthia the red dress with all of the ruffles loved it as well very long train cynthia usually does well for me then we had portia portia was sitting right next to andy which i think this is probably the very first time that she was um and she had on a purple velvet like a like a fish uh, what is it called? Like a fishtail dress. Um, long train, beautiful. The color was to die for. Very deep jewel-toned purple um, with a crown. Let's just talk about that side of the couch first, okay? Like I said, this is Portia's first time on, you know, on the very left or right of Andy, which usually means that you were a favorite of the season. So when we look at Kenya over there, who has had her times being right next to Andy. Um, interesting. I was like, I guess the producers still are making Kenya pay for her season. She didn't have much camera time, although she did make up for it on this reunion, <laughs> didn't she? Okay, guess I'll get it out the way right away. Congratulations. She announced that she is having a baby. Did not necessarily say the words, I am pregnant, and that has made a lot of people, you know, kind of say that she's probably had a surrogate and not necessarily pregnant. I mean, I guess time will tell. I, I'm not even going to get into the whole discussion about Kenya's age and everything because, child, I didn't talk about it on Instagram and Twitter. You guys know how I feel about it, but I'm happy for Kenya. I'm happy for anybody that, you know, had had a hard time trying to get pregnant and eventually did at any age, okay? But the fact of the matter is still that is an older age to be having a baby and it's harder. So that might be the reason why she's had some difficulties getting pregnant and she may not even be pregnant. I kind of feel like she is. I was more, the, the way I kind of saw it was more that she was not sure if she was going to say it or not or not sure how she was going to say it. Maybe she and her husband had discussed maybe she would keep it to herself until she got a little further along. But then she just kind of decided to go on and say it there. She might have been even thinking in her mind like, damn, I didn't tell my man that I wasn't going to say nothing. You know, so it can be kind of read a bunch of different ways. We'll just have to see because you guys all know that um, your stomach gets bigger when you're pregnant and um, there's no way to really hide it once you start getting in those later months. So we'll just keep our, we're going to keep our good eye on it. But uh, yeah, her being all the way over there, I was like, damn. But it looked like she might, you know, get her peach back for next season considering she's now making it seem like, you know, Mark is more open to um, coming on the show even though Andy was very specific in saying that Mark did not like the show, that he felt like it was a bad representation of black women, and that Andy knows personally some people that he had said that to. So I was just like, oh, you guys are really trying to give it to Kenya. Um, so that was the left side of the couch. On the right side of the couch, we had Nene. Nene was in a um, in a burgundy color. I didn't like it. It was like, oh, I didn't like it. I don't I don't really know how to describe what it was. It was um, a shorter in the front, but it had like a tail. It kind of reminded me of a flapper dress, but not really. It didn't have fringes and things like that, but it was just like, I didn't like it. We had Candy next to her. Candy looked like a little Barbie doll. She had about 10 pounds of hair in her head. <laughs> That's how I felt with that long ass yummy. I'm telling you, that hair was so fucking long that I just uh, had. Um, it wasn't necessarily that long. It's just that it was thick all the way down to the bottom. So if you guys are looking for hair that is thick from the 
top all the way down to the bottom and don't be having the most scruggly ends, honey. Yummy extensions. That raw Cambodian hair is it. But anyway, Candy, she looked pretty in her sparkly dress, you know, low cut, you know, the big... Um, you know, Tabitha from Bewitched. I know I'm too I'm too old. Y'all don't know who the fuck that is, but that that was kind of reminded me of her hairdo. And then next to her we had Sheree. And um y'all know how I feel about Sheree. Oh, we're gonna talk about Sheree in a little while. Anyway, that was the setup. That side of the couch made more sense to me. Um, I mean, the whole couch setup did make sense, considering how the month, w I mean, the season went. But, uh, yeah. And who was your best dress? My best dress, I think I'm going to give it to... <sighs> I love Candy's dress, but I'm kind of over all the sparkles and shit, you know. So, I, I think I might give it to Portia, only because I loved the purple. I thought it was beautiful. And then my worst dress is Nene. But I thought they all collectively looked very nice for um, uh, their dresses. I didn't even mention what Sheree had on, huh? She had on a hot pink um, Gucci number covered from head to toe. I don't like that look. Like, I, I be needing some sort of something. Some skin showing somewhere. Um, but, you know, I, I won't say that I felt like Portia, I mean, uh, Sheree looked terrible. I just, you know, whatever, child. <laughs> and since we're talking about everybody's look, they actually started the show with memories of everybody's look, how they've evolved from, you know, season one, season two, season three, depending on when they came on the show, all the way up to season 10. And they've all come a long way. So like I said, I thought that everybody collectively looked nice. Now, to the meat of the show, starting with Candy. We're going to get on this whole, you know, trying to understand why Candy insists on inviting Portia to events that she's having when she doesn't really like Portia. Someone wrote in that why would Todd bring up Portia, bring some negativity to her event? And Candy was like, well, I just thought that, you know, anybody that can rise above what somebody else has done to them and uh, invite them to a situation. And I was on the cover of Essence magazine to me, that is a win all the way around. <laughs> In other words, Candy wanted Portia to see that even though you tried to be smirchify my name, shout out to Don King, <laughs> even though you tried to make me look bad, look, I'm still doing it. So it was kind of sort of like an aha in your face. But still, what Todd said was unnecessary. They started talking about Mama Joyce and how Mama Joyce was mad at karma for some shit that she had heard on the streets, but then when it came to Portia, she was willing to go sit down and have lunch with her and even hug her, okay? And Candy's like, well, you know how I felt about that, but I was more upset about what she said about Todd. And that would be about turning lemons into lemonade. Fuck, Todd was the one that came up with the idea for OLG. Not if you ask that one that tried to sue him, no. He said it was his idea, but that's neither here nor there. And, um... You know, once they started to really harp on the bitchiness of Mama Joyce, you know, Candy was like, don't get to talking about my mama too much, okay? Don't talk about her mama, her man, her money. And she done told y'all that a hundred times. But back to this thing with Portia. Candy's whole thing is she never felt like Portia was sincere in her apology, okay? And Portia tried to explain that she had apologized right after she said what she said on the reunion show last year. She apologized right after the reunion show. Then she decided that she she would give Candy some space because, I mean, you know, she was trying to stay out of her way. But then she also apologized to her on the show. Um, but none of those things were ever good enough. I thought that Candy did a good job of kind of explaining that uh, what we fail to remember as viewers is they started recording the show for season 10 like a month after the reunion show aired so it is a little bit more understandable why why candy you know is not necessarily one to want to be Portia's friend right away but see I've always said from the beginning Candy doesn't have to be Portia's friend ever okay I don't think anybody really expects her to get over it our whole issue was the fact that you would purposely invite her around and then you would shade her the entire time. Or you would have shit to say when really, if you didn't have her around you, then you wouldn't be saying negative shit and then we wouldn't look at you as this passive-aggressive bitch that you can be sometimes, okay? So that's the bottom line of the whole thing, okay? Um, you know, when Portia said Candy keeps on bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up, you know, <laughs> Yeah, Candy started with the broke up. I don't think you understand. 
what you did. You could have ruined my whole brand. And yeah, she could have, but she didn't. And I think we all know that Portia lied and that her and Phaedra had this thing going and all of that. So I'm not trying to tell Candy to get over it, but two seasons is really enough of it, I would think. Portia said that she's not apologizing and I was like, good. You don't apologize no more because you guys will never see eye to eye on this. Maybe you'll get to this spot in your lives like how Kenya and Portia are, okay? They don't necessarily hate each other anymore, you know? I guess they are leery and wary of each other, but they're willing to be around each other and coexist and even sometimes be cordial to each other. So... Maybe that's where Candy and, and uh, Portia will eventually get. But then, you guys, we get Mar Marlo. Okay, Marlo comes out in a be beautiful lavender number. Very girly. I always like, well, I usually always like what Marlo has on. And this time is no different. I thought she looked beautiful. What was strange, though, is they really started on the drama between Marlo and Kenya when I felt like Kenya and Marlo had steered pretty much clear of each other the whole season. I mean, I don't remember them ever really getting into any real confrontation on the season. So it was strange that they brought it up for the reunion. And honey, Kenya was 100% ready for Marlo's ass. You know, they asked Marlo if her friendship with Kenya was real or not, and Marlo didn't think that it was. Marlo said that the only reason why Kenya was Marlo's friend was because she was trying to get back at Nene. <sighs> I don't, I mean, Marlo was doing that to try to get back at everybody. You know, Marlo befriended Kenya because she knew that that would piss Nene off. Marlo wanted to still be on the show. And so she needed a reason to be there. And if she's pissed at Nene, then she needs to be friends with somebody else, right? And that would be Kenya. So really, Marlo used Kenya and not vice versa. But child, they got the arguing back and forth. And Kenya said that she drew the line with Marlo's friendship when Marlo said that um, if Kenya's mama don't even like her, then nobody else would. And then Marlo says, you know what, Kenya, you should be an actress. And she was like, I am an actress. Check my resume, boo. And then she was like, you and this fake marriage. And then Kenya was like, oh, whatever about my fake marriage, okay? You should stop worrying about my fucking marriage. If you would stop fucking everybody's husband, then maybe you can get your own. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> when she said that she had a square between her legs, I said, girl, oh my God. And then that was when that ushered in the topic of John. And um, Nene stayed surprisingly silent on this whole issue. We had already heard about it in the blogs. I think B. Scott was the one that actually broke the story about how Kenya said that Marlo blackmailed Nene by getting with that white guy, John, the pizza, the pizza giant, while she was divorced from Greg. I guess Nene and John had then had some sexual text messages, and Marlo had seduced him, had had him come to her house, got him drunk, gave him a, a massage. I said, what kind of massage was it with a happy ending, Marlo? But while he was passed out, she supposedly got into his phone, took some screenshots, and um, threatened Nene some kind of way with this evidence. Not real clear what the threat was. Maybe it would have been for Nene to, you know... Um, go hard for having Marlo back on this season because they really have given Marlo way more voice this season than they ever have with the exception of when she first came on because I think they were trying to test her out but they found soon after that maybe Marlo wasn't a perfect fit for this show so that's the only I mean how else would she threaten her she was divorced from Greg Okay, technically, even though people say that they weren't really. And Nene only co-signed by saying that she did not, you know, really appreciate Marlo trying to go and seduce him to find out what went on between the two of them. But she still didn't seem as upset as she should have been, in my opinion. So I was like, Are you guys just trying to kind of cover this up and move on real quickly? And they did. Never really understood that whole story. And then, you know, but Marlo did say that she got some money out of him, and so did Nene. Okay, they bled old John dry, and th that's it. But what did you guys take of that whole story? Was it was it strangely disjointed to you? Actually, the whole reunion was disjointed. The editing was so weird and all over the place. But, um, yeah, they moved on quickly from John. And, oh, also, let me not forget... When they got to talking to Kenya about uh, Mark's parents, that was also a strange part. I was just like, Kenya was not 
ready. The fact that they got married so quickly, you know, gave everybody the good side eye. And then the fact that she didn't tell anybody, including Cynthia, who's supposedly her best friend on the show. I don't think that they're best friends in real life. I mean, friends enough, but um, anyway, it started with Andy asking her, you know, does she regret saying shit that she said about the other wives' husbands in the past um, so negatively now that she's a married woman and she actually did admit that she regretted it. And then, of course, Portia was going to pin her to the wall I'll say so you didn't have a respect for nobody's uh, marriage until you got married Kenya was like she didn't want to go here you know let's just not even get on that subject and I was like let's not even though Kenya you did give everybody grief okay so you can't really expect them to not be all over you and your husband but then that's how they got on the subject of her getting married right away and nobody being around Cynthia not knowing Kenya just felt like she didn't want to tell anybody she couldn't trust even Cynthia wouldn't say anything and Cynthia was like I wouldn't have said anything which I don't think that Cynthia would but sometimes you're in that mode like I ain't telling nobody even though there were some people there we saw the picture with her and um Auntie Cisco so I was just like some of the folks was there but pointedly Mark's parents weren't there. And I guess that wouldn't be so strange other than the fact that Kenya, when they asked her about it, she was just sort of like, couldn't get her words together. And I was like, girl, now they already giving you the side eye on this man. Now you got... Okay, so she said she hadn't met the parents because they live out the state and uh, she thinks that they were on a cruise at the time of the, of the, um, of the wedding. Okay, that's all fine and good, but you guys have had plenty ample time to fly there, or they could fly where you are, Atlanta, New York, y'all, meet halfway something. And she said that she's talked to him on the phone. I was like, no, 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 girl. See, what you should have just said was when they asked you, have you met his parents, you should have just said, yep. You wouldn't have been lying if you talked to him on the phone. You ain't seen him in person, but still, I was just like, ooh, can you? Girl, you giving these people reason to look at that marriage kind of side eye. And they're going to jump on that next season if he does come on the show. So they better get ready. Marlo also brings up that Kenya is manipulative, you know, and that's the reason why she didn't want Cynthia to be Kenya's friend. And Cynthia was just like, I wish everybody would understand. Like, I have my own mind. We were like, <laughs> I almost said Mona bitch to Cynthia. <laughs> Girl, you ain't never had your own damn mind. Stop it. And then um, Andy asked Marlo about Sheree, you know, how she felt about Sheree. And she said she liked Sheree until she started being friends with Kim. Okay, and that's how we got on the subject of, of Sheree and all her turncoat carrying the bone gossiping ass. Andy asked who's the next person to get married. They were like, well, Sheree is supposedly supposed to be getting married to the jailbird, even though he ain't out of jail yet. Portia says she gonna claim it in Jesus' name. Okay. She said she was seeing somebody. I'm not sure if she was really serious about that or not then we jump off of Sheree for a second to start talking about how Nene and Portia's friendship has evolved and you know how they were so mad at each other at the beginning of the season and how they were able to you know eventually get to the point where Portia is calling Nene for advice Nene said that she didn't feel like their issues was big enough for them to not get over it and Portia pretty much agreed you know they were really good friends at one time so you know it was easier for them to get back to it as far as Candy though you know Candy was like well I couldn't we ever get it back to together and Portia was like because you won't even sit down and have a conversation with me bitch you gotta meet me halfway okay if you always just sort of kind of like oh well whatever and just kind of brushing her off then what you expect the girl to do and Nene finally admits that she shouldn't have said that Portia needed to be off of the show okay even though it was semantic she didn't say fired but she basically said I would get rid of them so that's the same thing okay so back on Sheree Sheree is mad that Portia said don't trust Sheree and Portia was just like well of course I would say that I mean do you trust me and Sheree said as far as I can throw you she said well exactly okay you don't even trust me why the fuck you so offended by me telling somebody else not to trust you you are the bone carrier that's what I said in my review a couple of weeks ago like you the one that's so proud about your LLC <laughs> that girl businessifies the stupidest things like what you gonna do off the bone carrier Child, just a stupid. I can't believe I forgot about Andy. You guys know that Andy always, whenever he sees Sheree, the first thing he asks is, uh, when is she by Sheree coming out? That child gonna say at the beginning that, uh, 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 well, it's gonna be, uh, well, by spring, uh, late summer, uh, September. It's gonna be like leisure weary. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Bitch, a lot don't care who tell it. At this point, don't you know that that's just a little joke, an inside joke between the two of you that we all know? Ain't nobody expecting you to come out with no damn leisure line. 
girl, if you don't cut it the fuck out. Okay, so we already was looking at uh, Sheree like she was a liar from the beginning of the damn show. But as far as her saying, you know, she's mad that uh, Portia said that she didn't trust her and that, you know, she's always had Portia's back. She hasn't done anything to Portia to make Portia feel like she couldn't trust her. Look, sometimes I might not trust your ass. You ain't did shit to me, but I done seen what you did to other people. Okay? Shit, I be on Instagram and I be looking at some of my beloved rock stars. Y'all be cutting a fool on other people's Instagram. I be like, child, not my rock star. Then I be like, let me keep my good eye on them because, child, I'm going to make a man one day and they're going to talk bad about me too. Sometimes you can watch from a distance. You ain't got to do shit to me. But I see how you move. And that makes me govern my life accordingly. The whole time I was just like, oh, Sheree, just, just hush. Okay, because she was just trying to talk and trying to talk. And, you know, she was trying to talk real fast and trying to talk over Portia. Honey, Portia wasn't having it. Then she tried to get on Candy's bandwagon and um, use Candy's example. Because even though Portia did apologize to her, she didn't feel like it was sincere. So, motherfuckers, what the fuck is we apologizing for if you can just tell me that the shit wasn't sincere? I might as well be quiet. But Portia, you know, while everybody's jumping on her, she was just like, well, is anybody going to bring up the fact that Sheree knew about the video before we went to Barcelona and after, and she never said anything to Nene. And Nene was like, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. I was like, finally. So Roachgate. Sheree was kicking up and down the whole season with Kim. Kim would say all this shady-ass shit about Nene and Portia and uh, whoever else she wanted to talk about on the show and Sheree would never call her on it. Instead, she would just laugh and giggle and, you know, she was so tickled by, by it. But you the bone carrier. Now, you done told everybody else's shit, but when it comes to Kim, you don't say it because you're loyal. And I guess you have a choice. You can tell what you want when you want. Okay, these are the rules that has been written by the bone carrier. LLC. But the fact that you're on this show and you are trying to gain friendships with people that are on this show, you are trying to keep your peach with people that are on this show, why would you align yourself with somebody like a Kim who's not even on the show and that nobody really likes? You never once saw the problematic ways that Kim was. And then she tries to tell Nene that she was loyal because, you know, fuck. Back 20 years ago when she was the it girl, she got Greg and Nene into some fucking club opera or some shit out here. I was like... That's your reasoning of why, you know, you were loyal to Nene and Greg? What is wrong with Sheree? I said, this girl don't be prepared for shit, do she? Nobody give a fuck about that? We talking about Roachgate. We talking about the fact that you knew about this and didn't even try to give her a heads up. So, like I said, she said she pick and choose the carriage of the bones. Who she wants to carry them on to. And damn it, if you don't like it, that's too damn bad. And that is pretty much where we ended it. We find out that Kim is going to be there so she could defend herself. I cannot wait. Oh, I can't wait. Just from the clips, we know that they're going to rip that girl's ass apart. And she deserves it. And I hope they throw some Sheree up in there, too. Y'all know they say that they won't be back on the show. Sheree has lost her peach, and Kim won't be coming back as well. I'm thinking, good riddance. Sorry you guys didn't talk too long on that. <laughs> Still got to do Potomac. Um, so let me move on. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye. Bye.